imitinib in the first line treatment of patients with metastatic renal cell carcinoma and uh, presented the results of this trial, which is called the COMPARS trial. Dr. Motto, can I ask you please? Sure, thank you very much. So this is a trial that we conducted in patients with metastatic advanced kidney cancer. Uh, kidney cancer has generally been considered to be a, uh, a malignancy with a poor prognosis and until recently there really weren't good systemic therapies for this disease. There's been a, uh, a revolution uh, that occurred uh, around 2002-2003 with the development of angiogenesis drugs that attacked the blood vessels and strangled off the tumors for this, uh, this malignancy. And over the course of uh, the last seven or ten years, there's been a number of these medications that have been developed that are effective and benefit patients, and they've really changed the, uh, the prognosis and the outcome for patients with renal cancer. For the most part, uh, treatment has dominated in first line by uh, oral anti-angiogenesis tyrosine kinase inhibitor uh, drugs. Uh, and the, uh, the reference standard has been sinitinib, uh, which was developed in a big phase three trial uh, in first line therapy for renal cancer and, and, and changed the paradigm for how we treat this disease uh, and improve the prognosis. So pizopinib is a, uh, is a similar compound uh, that was studied in a slightly smaller trial, mostly here in Europe, uh, and also uh, revealed uh, similarly a, a high response rate, a progression, a long progression-free survival, which is really how we kind of judge the efficacy of these agents. Uh, and so in, in that study, the, uh, the safety profile for pizopinib was different than that which we had seen with sinitinib. Uh, the outcome of the progression-free survival looked about the same, but there was a lower incidence in looking across studies with certain adverse events or toxicities that were particularly problematic with sinitinib, and these included fatigue, patients would develop fatigue with sinitinib, hand-foot syndrome, which are painful blisters that occur in the bottom of the feet, uh, mouth sore, sores, or stomatitis. Um, in return, however, with pizopinib, there were higher incidents of some other toxicities, and the toxicity that was largely focused on was elevation of the liver function tests, or a, a drug-induced hepatitis. So we designed a, a trial uh, that compared sinitinib to pizopinib head-to-head -head in patients with a, a metastatic renal cell carcinoma. The idea of the trial was not to show one was superior to another, it was to show that uh, pizopinib had similar effectiveness to sinitinib, but a different safety profile that resulted in better tolerance for patients. And so this is the COMPARS trial that we will uh, be reporting in detail uh, today. Let's see here. No. Um, this was a 1,110-patient uh, trial, randomized head-to-head -head between pizopinib and sinitinib. It's the largest trial to date that's ever been conducted in patients with metastatic kidney cancer. And it compared the progression-free survival between the two drugs. Uh, the progression-free survival uh, was assessed by an independent committee, and the scans were sent to a core imaging laboratory and radiologists reviewed the response and the time to progression uh, without knowing which treatment the patient was on. And so um, the primary endpoint, which is shown here, uh, showed that the, uh, the progression-free survival was uh, uh, within um, the, the predetermined uh, guidelines of the protocol for showing non-inferiority. The median progression-free survival, let's see, is this point here, was 8.4 months for pizopinib and 9.45 months with sinitinib. 95% confidence intervals were essentially identical. The test that we used that looks at the progression-free survival over the whole course of the study and the one to focus on is the hazard ratio. 
The hazard ratio compares the progression-free survival of one drug to another, and one means they're exactly identical. So 1.047 is very, very, very close uh, to being exactly right on target on a one, and it was within the boundaries of what is acceptable for claiming non-inferiority for one drug or another. So the progression-free survival in layman's terms for pizopinib or the effectiveness for pizopinib is the same as sinitinib. We looked at adverse events between the two drugs and they're shown here. The ones in yellow are the ones that occurred more frequently with pizopinib and the ones in blue are the ones that were more problematic, occurred more frequently with uh, sinitinib. So the ones in yellow that were elevated, that were more common with pizopinib was inf elevation of ALT, which is a, uh, a blood test that we measure that assesses the liver. If it goes high, people refer to it as a hepatitis or a drug-induced hepatitis. And uh, a hair color change. Pizopinib is frequently associated with a whitening of the hair. But the ones that were more frequent with sinitinib were fatigue, this hand-foot syndrome, which is particularly problematic to patients on a day-to-day -day basis. It can result sometimes in difficulty walking and so forth. Taste alteration, meaning taste, food does not taste as good. And, uh, and thrombocytopenia, uh, and that reflects the fact that sinitinib lowers blood counts as well. So in my own opinion, uh, the um, side effects that were higher or worse with the sinitinib are the ones that really impact on the patient's day-to-day -day living. We also looked at quality of life, and these are questionnaires that the patients take, uh, independent of the doctors and the nurses. There's different scales that have been um, developed that are used commonly so that a patient can express his level of fatigue or whether it's sores in his mouth or bothering the patient, how he's generally feeling on the uh, treatment. And um, so th these are the different scales that we used uh, on the left uh, to pretty thoroughly uh, assess the quality of life or how patients perceive that they were doing from the standpoint of toxicity and what the impact was of the treatment on their day-to-day -day life. And what we found is that there was only one that was in favor of sinitinib, and that was highlighted in blue here, uh, a, 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 a tool that looked at their emotional um, state of being. Uh, but this was not statistically significant, it was very small. All the others that are highlighted in yellow, including fatigue, uh, the kidney symptom index, which is a, a number of different questions that how a patient's feeling, um, effects of treatment, side effects, functional well-being, um, different questionnaires we had about uh, uh, sores in the feet and mouth sores, they were all uh, in favor of pizopinib. And, and the ones in yellow, which were 11 out of the 14, were statistically significant uh, uh, in favor of pizopinib over sinitinib. So the, the conclusions of the trial show that the phase three trial demonstrates non-inferiority of pizopinib relative to sinitinib for progression-free survival. In layman's terms, it means the effectiveness or the efficacy of the two drugs is the same. Pizopinib efficacy was further supported by similar response rates and overall survival. I showed you the four key slides, but we have other slides as well that we'll show this afternoon that show that the response rate and the overall survival for the patients treated with one drug or another drug is virtually the same as well. There is a differentiated safety profile of pizopinib, and this includes a lower incidence of hand-foot syndrome, or sores in the feet, fatigue, and mucositis or mouth sores. There is a higher incidence of several others as well, and, that, and they include a liver function test abnormalities, which are higher with pizopinib. In general, though, the, the safety profile with the side effects worse with sinitinib are the ones that impact on patients' day-to-day -day activities in their life. And therefore, the quality of, this was expressed in the quality of life studies. 
which were favored pisopinib over sunitinib. Um, so my own feeling is, is that in terms of treatment for kidney cancer, it's a complicated in, uh, situation. It's an individual the situation between, between the doctor and the patient. But in general, this trial tips the scale for the preferred treatment, in my opinion, for most patients with kidney cancer, from sunitinib, which has been the reference standard, to uh, pizopinib, based on the better tolerance for this drug.